Now this is the thing that people don't seem to understand. The universe is built to deliver the experiences that are already happening. The universe is not a cosmic comforter that hands you a lollipop when you don't love yourself and says, oh, I'm going to just send you all these people who are going to love you because you don't love yourself, and oh, I'm sorry you don't love yourself. Let me send you loving people. Is that how it works? What happens to you when you don't love yourself? What does the universe send to you? Does it send you a lollipop? Hey, look at that. That person doesn't love themselves. That person doesn't have a high opinion of themselves. I have a puppet now. I can manipulate that puppet. I can make that person do what I want because they are too afraid to go against me. They want to be polite. They have such a low self-esteem that if I tell them something that I want them to do, they're not going to want to upset me. So what the universe actually does is that if you have a weakness, if you have something you don't like, the universe says, oh, you don't like that. Well, here, have some more. Have some more. Until you get to the point that you simply accept experience and accept yourself. And when you learn to accept yourself, you will not be manipulated because you will decide that it's better to preserve your sovereignty than to be manipulated by someone else. You will decide that your state of mind being positive and uplifting is a better state for you to be in than the state you're going to have to go through temporarily to really piss somebody off when they're trying to manipulate you. Because they're going to take it personally, they're going to get angry, they're going to throw hate at you. That's what they do. That's what these types of people do. Now we're not judging those people except in so far as that they are in confusion. They are living in a confusion that makes them think that the body is who they are. And they are trying to do things to comfort the body at your expense. This is the meme that's going on in the entire planet. That's what a lot of these talks that you've been hearing are about. We are talking about how much Corruption and greed and rottenness has festered into the society and the structure of civilization on earth, in the governments, in the militaries, in the corporations, in the school system, in the financial system, throughout everything. There is this corruption, this molding that has occurred. Let's get out of the idea that this is a victim consciousness that we're going through. That's what I'd recommend. You do what you want. But this is how I've decided to live. I'm not going to be anybody's victim. I'm not going to be anybody's slave. I claim, and I ask you with me right now by your applause, to claim your freedom and your sovereignty in this moment. Let's have a hand for that. All right. If you can claim your freedom of positivity, your freedom from fear, that is the most threatening thing to the negative controllers in this world. Because this is a frequency war. The one thing they don't want you to have is a positive, loving feeling in your day-to-day -day life. If they can keep you thinking that you're at the brink of destruction, that nuclear missiles are ready to incinerate the earth, that the economy is ready to collapse, that your government is ready to herd you off into concentration camps, and they've whipped up this fever to such an extent that people are bringing armed weapons to gatherings where the president is, because now Fox News wants you to think that Obama is the same old thing. I don't care if that's what you believe or not. But any time that Fox News is telling me something is true, I'm inclined to think it's not true based on their past history. Can I get an amen on that? It's a little bit disturbing when you start watching Bill O'Reilly and Glenn Beck and they're saying exactly the same things as all your favorite conspiracy websites. That's not good. That's not what we want. Because Fox is a corporate entity. It is a 
propaganda organ. It's also important to understand that many of the conspiracy sites have been seeded with propaganda. These are not independent bloggers that are actually trying to raise money and do an honest living. These are people that are funded by the Pentagon and the NSA. We've had extensive discussions with people about this who are insiders. So what's happening now is that because as a planet we have not loved ourselves, we have been stuck in this self-loathing, in this self-condemnation, and this fear of our own potential, this fear of our power. The universe has not sent us these majestic, loving, cosmic leaders who are all-knowing and all-powerful and can be trusted with the warmth and the innocence of a young child. They have sent us vicious killers who will do nothing but spare no expense to rape us, to steal every cent of our money. That's what happens in the universe, but it only happens until you don't need the lesson. If you learn to love yourself, do those negative people still get fixated into your life to such an extent that that's all you ever have? No. If you're one of these people who's been through self-loathing and moved into positive self-concept and self-esteem, if you have learned the power of no, as opposed to the power of now, and you can say no to somebody trying to manipulate you, then all of a sudden, you're not shackled to this feeling of obligation to someone who is being grotesquely unfair. You now have the wherewithal to speak your mind, to say your piece, to get your needs met, even if it means that it's going to upset someone. Because if someone has denied you the respect and the sovereignty and the love that you deserve as a perfect child of God, then you deserve to protect yourself from that person. You deserve to love yourself enough that you claim your right to exist. The universe sees that you've learned your lesson. And now the people that would have taken away your freedom and would have taken away your sovereignty can no longer do so because even one flicker of light in the darkness is enough to show you the layout of the room. And we've had enough of that now that there is a massive awakening going on. Project Camelot, and I was a part of this, happened to get involved in the center of this swine flu vaccination conspiracy because we had a situation unfold on stage in Zurich between myself and another witness who was arguing in favor of vaccinations and is actually a former operative for Majestic, which is the UFO working group arm of the neoconservative Republican New World Order faction of the world elite. So he's telling you you should get the vaccine. Now granted, there is a great deal of science to suggest that vaccines do confer immunity. We are not disagreeing with that. but we are also considering the testimony of people like Jane Bergemeister, a well-known mainstream journalist who happened to go alternative when she started to find out that Baxter Pharmaceuticals, as you all know, had released a vaccine, and thank God these people in Norway injected it into some rats before they gave it to people, and the rats all got bird flu and died. Oops. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Did we do that? No, of course not. So look, you also have people in the government who are not high enough to know that this swine flu thing might have been manufactured, and they have a very legitimate concern about the swine flu. It's being kept secret, but they do believe that this could mutate like it did in 1918, that you get sick the first time, it's not that bad, but you get sick the second time, and everybody's dying. Millions of people are dying. That's the theory. 
Let's bear in mind that in 1918, the world was nowhere near as civilized as it is now. Sanitation was much less. In order for you to have any of these flus, regardless of what they are, get your health down in a negative way, your immune system has to be depleted. What's the biggest thing in this new science I'm going to teach you about that depletes your immune system? Negative thoughts. So if they can keep you in fear, which means that you hate the government, you hate the president, you hate what's happening to your kids in school, you hate the economy, you hate the Federal Reserve, if you're angry and you're fearful all the time, and then they stick out a little virus, guess what happens to you? You get the virus. A virus is a frequency-based entity. As you see in my 2012 Enigma video, polio, rubella, all these various viruses have geometric structure, which is wave particle structure. Geometry can flip around into the time field and become a wave.